What's up, Airtable enthusiasts? Gareth Pronovost here from Gap Consulting, and I am super excited to be bringing this interview to you. Our team member, Ali, had the opportunity to sit down and have a chat with Michael from Stacker. Now, if you're not familiar with Stacker, it allows you to build a user interface or a portal for other people to log in and essentially access the database that you built in Airtable. It is an incredible tool and they have a lot of really cool features that are on their roadmap right now. And so in this interview, Ali talks to Michael, gets a little bit of background on you know who he is as a person, what inspired him to build Stacker and all the good stuff that they have in the pipeline. Now do know that this interview is a condensed version. We tried to edit it down for YouTube. If you're interested in catching the full interview, the whole 30 or 40 minutes of it, it's available only to our mastermind members. So if you are a real Airtable power user and you want to join our mastermind, or if you're just still learning and you need a little bit of extra support, that might be a great place to head. So I'll include the link below. If that's of interest, feel free to swing by and check it out and learn a little bit more about it. But without further ado, let's get right on into it. Jump into that interview with Stacker. So thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today. You are with Stacker and I am a huge fan. So I'm really excited to hear more about how you guys got started and what was the um, inspiration behind it. Yeah, really, really excited to be here. Um, so the, the story goes back actually to um, my, me and my co-founders days um, in our first job where we met each other and uh, we were using the Salesforce platform and we were in this big asset management company in London, a very kind of old and um, very, very mediocre company. And they asked us to find out what this what this Salesforce platform thing was. Um, and we quickly worked out that it was um, a pretty mediocre CRM, but actually a really great low code platform for building enterprise apps. And we had our secret um, secret power that we would go and work really, really closely with um, people in the business. So we were in the IT team, but we'd actually go and sit with the people in the business and just say, hey, what are the apps that you wish that IT had delivered or what have they delivered that you hate? And they would tell us and in front of them, we would just kind of recreate it using Salesforce's UI and also code and all the things that you need to be in order to be a Salesforce developer, we could do, but we could do it really fast in front of them. And for them, this was like magic. This was just incredible. Um, and we were producing things that IT would take you know, months and months and months to do. We could just do it in front of them. And then they could go and say, well, I want to change that. And we could do that as well. And the, the speed of iteration um, in creating these um, applications was just a real ground, uh, game changer for them. After that, um, I went into building tech products um, in tech startups. Um, and I was really surprised that even though I was part of teams of really, really smart, talented engineers, um, we never really found a good way to deliver, especially internal tools in, in at all as quick a way as, as we had been doing in Salesforce. And even though the teams we were working with were really, really smart business teams that were very data-minded, um, they could never really give us the clear spec for exactly what uh, we should be building with code. Um, and so it was always the case that whatever we delivered, they were like, well, that's kind of right. But now that I see it, could you just change that thing? Or could you just, could you just was always the, the refrain. Um, and so we, um, Sam and I got back together and thought, well, hey, there must be, there must be a better way to be able to create these kind of enterprise facing apps um, for customers or for internal teams um, and actually let the people who understand the problems be able to do it rather than waiting for IT teams. And so we tried for a long time building um, a, I guess a, a, a no code app builder that was a little like bubble, like very much drag stuff onto the screen, wire up a button to a form, to a data table. Um, and that was really great, it was really powerful, but even though there was no code being written, it was not something that you could ever build something with if you were not already someone with a developer mindset, if you didn't have the design like skills, the design eye to make sure that the thing looked great. And if you weren't a product person who could solve product problems, like you really had to do everything from scratch. You had to do your login forms and everything. Um, and this felt like 
actually the opposite of what we wanted. We wanted to help people who weren't already creating apps, not the people who were creating them to be able to create them faster by ditching the code. Um, so we started looking for ways that we could let people take data they already had, like processes they were already running and convert those into an app because one thing that we really found was that even though people are not good at getting a blank canvas and deciding what's going to go on it, if you show them something that's working, it's very, very easy for them to say, well, oh, I want to change that and I want to change that and that needs to go there. Like very quickly, people can work out what they want and how to do it. So we, we looked for a long time for different systems and we even tried actually hooking into Salesforce as our data system um, because even though it's a good tool for, dev uh, for developers and IT teams, it's still not good for um, people who actually aren't coders. But in the end, we found Airtable was the perfect mix of people who were really thinking in data, people who had really modeled out how their business worked, but who didn't have the ability to create applications on top of that data, to create things that they could either give to their extended team, to their partners, to their customers, um, in a way that was easy to use, that people didn't need to understand the underlying data model of how they'd modeled it, um, and was you know, nicely branded and looked and felt as if it was software created from scratch. So um, we were really, really, I think, happy to find, find the Airtable community. Uh, and um, originally the product that we built was even called Airportal um, because we were like, well, hey, let's, uh, let's, jump on, let's jump on the bandwagon. There's a couple of reasons why when you want to use Facebook, you don't just get access to the Facebook um, database. I mean, firstly, it would be like insecure. Like you could go and see everyone else's stuff. You, you could go and edit anything from anyone. It's also like, it'd be really hard to use. You'd have to go and go to different database tables to see like, oh, okay, here's my profile, but now I've got to go to a different one, see my posts, different one, see all the likes. And it also just, obviously it would not feel like an app experience. It wouldn't feel like they've made something for me. It would feel like I'm just going in, you know, going into their, their backend. Um, and I think that's exactly the same stuff that we provide to Airtable users, that people can make their data safe. They can show people only the stuff that they're meant to see um, and let them do only the actions they're meant to do. Um, so, which is perfect for the customer portal use case where obviously you can't share your whole data set to all your customers because you know everyone see everyone else's address and their orders and whatever. So you can make it safe. You can make it easy to use. So rather than having to remember, um, okay, I need to go and set the status to approved and set the approval date to today and then type in an approval reason and set approved by to me, we can just press one button and pop up that little box which says what's the approval reason and go. Um, you can take data from all the different tables um, and put them all on one page. Um, so rather than having to go for a customer and go to a different page to see their um, the different feedback they left, um, another page to see their orders, just show it all in one place. And then of course it's branded. It feels like um, a piece of software you've written. And I think for some people that is just, it's just magic when they see this app that has come to life from the data they've built and they've put their logo and chosen their color scheme. Um, it just feels magical. Um, is now, do you have an example maybe you could show just like of a portal? Yeah, yeah. I can give you a, a sneak preview into, um, into StackerX. Um, and uh, there'll definitely be some things which in here which are not, well, certainly not live and maybe won't even go live in our initial launch, but um, this is this is one of our kind of working demos. Um, so one of the big changes that StackerX brings uh, that we haven't really been able to do so far is allowing you to have multiple apps that each of your apps users can, can access or allow you to share those apps with the relevant users. So here we've got this company that has split their, their app, they're a, um, a property management company into an employee directory, um, a properties app, and a place where they can have um, manage their tenant applications. And depending on what role you are in this company, you can see some or all of these, these apps. So we've got this kind of new, even higher level of sharing and permissions, which is not just on the record level or even on the table level, but it's really on the, on the app level. Um, so we can go to properties. You can see here, we've got our new dashboarding functionality, um, all in line and obviously all updated in real time as, uh, as, as the data um, sinks in. Um, and those, those charts and graphs also can, 
work on list pages as well. Um, so on that list that you go to every day to see, you know, what tasks do I need to do? You can see how many tasks have come in recently, what's the breakdown been, um, and uh, yeah, and and whatever you like. Um, if we go and have a look into one of these, you can see that this app is actually powered by three different Airtables, um, all all linked across, uh, and in that we've we've created some synth synthetic links between these different tables so that the maintenance requests can be tied to the right property um, and so that leases can be tied to the right units. And all of that, even though they are completely separate bases, can work with links and lookups and rollups, just as if they were in together. Um, and we've also got some, some Stripe data coming in for the different um, subscriptions that this uh, property management company um, manages. So this is, um, this is, I think, what we're really like hoping to see um, more and more of as we're rolling um, StackerX out. And um, just a word on the name there, that's our kind of like um, labs um, branding. Eventually th this will become Stacker and this is the this is the product that everyone will have um, very, very soon. So uh, this is a, like a sneak preview of something that is gonna be coming for everyone um, pretty soon. Perfect. Oh, it looks beautiful too. Well, thanks, thanks. And it's uh, uh, we've uh, we've been trying to do lots of stuff to really make the experience for people using the app on a daily basis much, much better. Um, and we've got a uh, a quick switcher, um, so you can move to any other any other page in your app um, just by hitting the keyboard. And all sorts of little tweaks to um, to deal with the fact that you know originally this wasn't designed for frequent use. This was designed for customers coming in occasionally. Um, but we've we've grown and evolved, and as we've seen what people do, we've um, added the things that make uh, you know make stuff useful for them. So now we've got buttons where you can go and change the status. Now we've got breadcrumbs so you can work out where you came from, keep your place in the search, and whatever. Um, and we've got unified notifications across across your whole app um, for when people um, tag you and comment you in um, in messages. Oh my goodness! I could not be more excited to try this out. This is awesome. <laughs> that's uh, really kind oh of course thank you so much this is really wonderful and we'll make sure we'll put all of the links in the description of this video to go check out stacker and stacker x um so excited thank you so much well i'm re really excited for you to uh you to try it i know you've been uh with us from the very very start and uh uh yeah a lot of change since then and hopefully you like this version I already can tell that I will. <laughs> and I'm sure all of the people that are listening out there will as well. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Well, uh, been really, really great to, uh, great to show you it. Absolutely. It was a pleasure, Michael. Thank you so much. All right. I hope you got a ton of value from that interview. If you would like to check out the full version, remember it is available only to our Mastermind members. Again, check out the link in the description below if that's of interest. And I'll see you in the next video.